I'm showing you some of the smaller projects I'm juggling right now on the HO Scale Sedalia Subdivision layout, coming up right now on the main track. Hey everyone, it's great to have you on board. My name is Mike and welcome back to the main track. I wanted to give you a quick update and show you some of the things that have been keeping me busy the last several weeks. We've had a lot of cold nights already here in Missouri for the winter so far, and that's giving me plenty of chances to come out here in the layout room, stay warm, and get some work done. Not exactly been undertaking any major projects or expansions, just a lot of smaller things here and there, kind of whittling down that to-do list and taking care of some of those housekeeping items. So let's take a look here at the layout. I'll show you some of the things that I've got going on right now. And I'm going to give you this quick layout tour and what we call in the TV world going off the shoulder, just sort of a handheld. So I apologize for maybe some of the shakiness, but this is going to be the best way that I can show you some of the progress I've made here on the layout. Well, first of all, I wanted to show you this road crossing right here. I mentioned in previous episodes that there's going to be grade crossing signals right here. And you can see I have one of those installed. This is from a company online called We Honest. It's a company out of China. I saw these online and wasn't exactly sure what these were going to entail, but I tell you, I am pretty impressed uh, so far with these. When I first installed them, I thought they were a little uh, too large for scale, but I did some measurements on this, and I was pretty surprised to see how close to scale this actually is. Uh, a lot of times your memory and your perspective uh, may be a little bit off. I think it looks pretty good so far. I've not got the wiring done yet. We've got another one of these uh, I'm going to be installing right there that I have ordered. I'm taking a look at these, I'm actually pretty impressed at how they're constructed. Uh, as with any small thing, when you're working with uh, scale models, it's not going to be perfect. You can see some wires in there. But they did a pretty good job of uh, painting these. These things are very strong. They're made out of brass, and uh, these are not fragile or delicate whatsoever. So if you drop one of those, hopefully you don't, but if that were to happen, uh, these things are going to be holding up pretty strong. One of the nice things is these come with the stop on red signal signs already installed and that was a standard for the MKT here in the Sedalia subdivision. Heading on down here uh, to the small yard, you can see right there it looks more like a, an engine terminal at this point. That's because I have a lot of these locomotives out here on the tracks. I've been doing a lot of stuff to the locomotives. You can see right back there that is a GP40 number 237. I kind of showed you that in my previous episodes, one of those former uh, Conrail units. So I've got some weathering to do on that still, but I have the decals done on that. I also showed you I had some new Athern Genesis GP39-2s that I had uh, purchased, and we've got some of those sitting right here. This is number 365, followed by number 373, and uh, I've also got number 363. These GP39-2s are my favorite Katy locomotive. They were the newest mode of power on the Katy uh, in those latter years right there leading up to the Union Pacific merger. So I uh, had some of the older GP40s running around, I compared those to the GP39-2s. There we have uh, number 323. That's one of those former Conrail GP38s. Uh, my very last video I did, I showed you exactly how I converted that, patched it up, decaled it, and uh, also did some weathering on that. So. I have a link posted right above to show you exactly the process that I undertook to get that locomotive to look just like that. One of the things I've done with these GP39-2s is upgrade the lighting. Now you can see right here on 365, for instance, uh, we've got that strobe light flashing on the top. Now these were from Atherin's original GP39-2 uh, Katie painted run of these locomotives. They had some of the old incandescent bulbs in those. They were not super bright, especially when it came to that strobe light. So what I've done is I've installed some LEDs in those. Uh, those hopefully are going to last me a lot longer. Not going to have any problems with burning them out. And they're also brighter. And coming down a little bit, this right here is GP7 number 93. Looking back through some of my archives, I did a video on this several months ago. Uh, just kind of doing a review of this Atlas locomotive and uh, knew I needed to get it weathered and so I finally did that. You can see uh, this locomotive now looks like it's been road hard and put away as they say and I've been working hard out there on the Katy. Definitely needed to dirty that up and weather it and I think it looks a lot more realistic with this weathering on it for sure. And there we have my two GP40s number 171 and 175 that I highlighted on an episode recently where I showed you the process of getting new sound decoders in that. They look uh, pretty good, and they've been doing really well for me here on the layout. 
We're going to move down a little bit uh, here on the Highway 50 bridge. I did a little bit of touching up, finished out some of the handrails on the other side. It's just pretty much did some additional detail work on the bridge and uh, little things that add up. All right, so now looking at the Missouri Public Service power plant, I got some additional uh, high voltage lines done. These were the lines that came into the plant. A lot of people have asked me how I construct my utility lines. Uh, do plan on doing an episode on that sometime. Uh, but these were all built according to uh, pictures taken from the scene back there uh, in the 80s there in Sedalia, Missouri. What I do is I use dowel rods and also some basic styrene strips. And I also use insulators from uh, Walther's power line kits. I don't use most of the stuff that comes in those kits, uh, but I do use some of the pieces and parts for my utility lines and also uh, my line poles along the railroad right of way, just the same. All right, we're gonna take a look down here a little bit more. And this here is the uh, arrival plant. We had an episode on that a few weeks ago. And this here is where things get a little bit dirty. I've been hard at work. Uh, this right here is gonna be Ohio Street. And this over here is 16th Street. And you see um, the railroad kind of crosses where there's gonna be an intersection right there. Some of you might be wondering, why in the world do I have so many road crossings? Uh, that's actually prototypical because the Katy Main Line through Sedalia uh, cut across the city blocks on a very tight angle. And so as a result, there were lots and lots of grade crossings. There were several instances where the uh, tracks crossed right across the intersecting roads. There's even a couple instances where the track went right through the middle of a four-way stop. So um, obviously not gonna model all 20 grade crossings uh, that were in Sedalia at that time. On this, there's gonna be some more of those grade crossing signals from We Honest on both sides. All those will be all wired together and lit up. So I'm looking forward to seeing what that looks like in the end. All right, and so things are getting kind of rough, but I'll show you what I have right here. This is uh, the MFA elevator that will be going in my Green Ridge, Missouri scene. I will have a grain elevator on this part of the layout, but uh, it's not gonna be this one. This one I just stuck right here. I've been working on this in recent months, trying to get the look just right. That's gonna be a very interesting part of the Green Ridge community section of the layout that I'm gonna have. Uh, I'll be building that sometime in the coming months. So when I get that done, I will have this industry all good and ready to go. Well, as you can see here, I have plenty of work to keep me busy, but I have an exciting new project to tell you about. You might have noticed in some of my previous episodes that my layout is constructed here in my converted garage. I've been able to do some modifications to try to keep it warm during the winter months, and I've had a little bit of luck with that. Pretty much what I'm able to do is keep it 30 degrees warmer in here than it is outside. So that means if it's 30 degrees out there, of course it's still pretty comfortable in here. But once you get down to 10 degrees out there, it's not very comfortable. And of course I've got to stay inside and not get a lot of layout work done. So. What I'm gonna be doing is building a small switching layout in my office studio to provide just some work that I can do on some of those chillier nights and wait for those warmer times when I can get out here and do more projects here on the big layout. I'll look forward to showing you that in coming episodes here on the main track. We'll see you then.